Welcome to You Can Do It. I'm your host, Chris, and in this episode, we're going to turn this 55-gallon soap drum, this plastic soap drum, into this uh, planting tower. It's a garden tower, and it holds up to 40 plants. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss this episode. We're going to show you how to make this garden tower. So I made this garden tower for under $100. I got the barrel off Craigslist for $15. Um, you you want to find a plastic barrel that doesn't have real hard chemicals in it. Maybe a food grade container. Some of the food grade containers, they actually have a removable lid. But these particular ones that I got, I had to cut the lid off. So we're going to show you how to do that. Um, as you can see, we've got 40 plants growing in here. We've got anywhere from hot peppers to bell peppers. On the back side, we have strawberries growing. Um, we've got tomatoes up top, zucchini. Um, the nice thing about this is you don't need to have a really long uh, planting bed that takes up a lot of real estate. So this would be for small backyards, but you could have up to three or four of these planting barrels with over 40 plants growing in it, and you can kind of get an idea of how much food you can be growing. Um, I have a four inch drain pipe that runs down the center with perforated holes with a removable cap so that you can install compost into this pipe um, and as you water it the water also seeps into this four inch pipe which then runs down through a screen and then you can drain out the water um, in the bottom of it so that you can take this water here and then run it back through the system so this brown tea looking water there's a lot of nutrients in it you don't want to discard that you just want to install it back into your planting garden here and let it run back through and you just continue to do that so let's get started and we're going to show you how you can make this all right, so here's all of our tools. I laid them out. Um, we've got a 10-foot stick, a 4-inch. Uh, this is like sewer pipe for a leach field. It, yeah, as you can see, it's got perforated holes on uh, two, two runs of perforated holes in it. We're going to actually add more in this pipe. Um, we've got some galvanized quarter-inch welded wire. Um, we're going to make some screen, a screen that goes into the pipe. Um, we've got a four inch uh, pipe fitting here and we've got a cap, a four inch cap that screws into the bottom. We've got a brass, a half inch brass nipple that'll thread into this half inch ball valve that goes on the bottom. And then we have a four inch cap that goes on the top of the pipe. And then over here, we've got some construction paper left over from a job that we did. And we'll show you what we're going to use that for. Uh, we have a heat gun for heating up the, the barrel to make those pockets where the plants are installed. And this here is a hot water heater table or a stand that you install a hot water heater on in the garage or... Um, in a house, but it, it's a kit you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, this is from a remodel that we did, and I actually use it to weld. Um, and that is what we'll use for the tank to sit on. But actually, I'm going to make one um, with some adjustable legs on it, because where we're going to install this tank in our backyard, it's going to be on unlevel ground. And so I'm going to make some adjustable legs out of uh, some uh, three-quarter rod, uh, threaded rod. And uh, we'll show you in the video how you can make that. Or if you want to simp uh, simplify it, you can use two-by-fours. Whatever you want to build your stand with. You don't have to, not everybody has access to a welder or can weld. But that particular stand right there, you can pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's or even Tractor Supply for right around $40. And that thing holds, um, I guess, a, a 50 to a 70 gallon hot water heater tank. So you can imagine how strong that is. You just have to set that particular table 
on some uh, pavers so that those legs don't just, you know, go down into the ground after you water it after a while. So anyhow, so let's get started and we're going to go ahead and start cutting the top off this tank. All right, so we're going to go ahead and proceed with cutting the top off this tank here. Um, you can use a Sawzall. Um, this works exceptionally well. Um, it, it can get a little crazy cutting it out. You want to make sure you keep your hand away from, you know, the blade and whatnot. And make sure you have a good grip on it. Or um, there's this cutout tool. It's a cordless cutout tool um, by, made by Milwaukee. And it has a saber tooth in the in the top of it here and this is what I'm gonna use it's kind of like a router bit and I'm just gonna put it in at an angle and go around um, like I said you can use a sawzall or there might be you know you could use a jigsaw um, whatever is easy for you all right so we've got the, the top cut off we kind of smoothed out the roughness around there because there were some burrs we just used kind of a sander um, I used a grinder to, to just kind of grind that off uh, and so now we're gonna go ahead and start laying out the uh, the incisions we're gonna make we're gonna put six inch incisions every few inches and stagger them on up to make those pockets that we had on the side of the tank so this is the layout that we've got going on here so if you put your tape measure from the bottom of the lip we're going every five inches and there'll be a row of pockets so 5 10 15 20 and 25 we're not going to go any lower than that because we're going to put a layer of rock down in here and then a, and then a piece of paper or cardboard to allow for um, the leaching of the water to go and drain properly um, and so we'll show you that later on in the video how to install that so we're going to go ahead and lay out these marks on the tank um, going across and we'll get started on cutting these out okay so ultimately after you get it all marked out this is what it'll look like before you begin to make your cuts um, these slots, the Sharpie mark here, it's six inches and they're four inches apart. And as you can see, each slot is staggered from the next line down and then it just alternates all the way down to the bottom. So this, when this pocket opens up, there's nothing underneath it to where this plant here has enough room to grow out. And then this one here, same thing. So, um, so after these, after you make the cuts, it'll look like this. This is what it'll look like, the cuts that you make. So I'll show you how to, how to make these cuts using a couple different tools, uh, depending on what you have and what technique works best for you as far as the tool that you're comfortable with. So on the Sawzall, you're gonna just kinda have one hand firm on the tank and get your Sawzall running. And actually I have the blade that I have it's an aggressive wood blade. It's not like a fine blade. Um, and this one will actually, after it's cut, after you cut it, it'll make kind of a nice wide slot. So you don't, you want to have a wide slot in it, kind of like what you see right here. Um, it's about an eighth inch slot. And mainly when you start heating this up, um, if it's too, if the slot's too thin, it'll actually glue itself back together when you heat it up. So you want to have kind of a good eighth inch gap. So we're going to go ahead and cut this one out. So there's one slot. So now I'll show you what the other tool, how that one works. It's a little bit easier to control. All right, so we're at the step of heating up each slot with the heat gun. So in this step, you're gonna need a heat gun, a good quality heat gun, a spray bottle with some cool water in it, a pry bar, a bottle of your choice, uh, a wine bottle that has a tapered neck on it, um, 
this one here it's kind of an antique bottle but we're just going to use that and a pair of safety glasses and a bucket so you can park your rear end for a while because this procedure is going to take a while to heat all these slots up it may take you two days depending on the time that you have but if you stay on it you can get it done fairly quick and it all depends on the quality of the heat gun too because if you're getting a lot of heat out of the heat gun it'll heat the plastic up a lot faster to where you can create each pocket um, but this technique once you get it done it'll definitely be worth your while um, creating this garden tower because number one it's plastic so you're not going to have to replace a bunch of wood products over time because of dry rot this thing will last years once you build this thing you'll be able to grow in it year after year after year so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to put my safety glasses on one thing that i have to caution you on is do not heat up the bottle with the torch you don't want to have or your heat gun you don't want to have the heat gun up there blowing heat on this bottle because what will happen is if you spray water on the glass you know it'll probably crack okay let's get started so I'm gonna this this particular heat gun has two settings low and high I'm gonna put it on high and we're just gonna go in a circular motion so I have it about an inch away from the plastic and you're just gonna kind of slowly go around in a circular motion all right so this pry bar this is where you're going to come into effect with this guy you're going to shove it in there and just kind of let it sit there while you continue to heat it because you're going to be able to pull this the opening forward and backwards so the ideal thing is you want to push the, the top piece back in this lower incision this plastic is going to come forward as we get the bottle in but this is going to help create an opening so that you can get the neck of the bottle in after it's nice and um, soft and once the, the plastic's soft you'll be able to get this in and you're going to pry and 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 push at the same time so um, once you get the first two going it you get the hang of it and it's just it's a breeze you just you you'll whiz right through it all right so you can see it, it's starting to heat up here i'm going to go ahead and grab the bottle you're going to insert the bottle let's get let's put this down you definitely want to probably have some good gloves on kind of move it back and forth and pull this down take the bottle you want to have your hand on the other side as well and as you pull up on the bottle it'll stay put and then just take your water bottle put it on spray mode where it kind of gives it a mist and then just spray the plastic cool it down So the outside and the inside because both sides of the plastic to really get it to cool down the cooler you get it to cool down when you pull the bottle out it'll keep form all right there we go one down 34 to go okay so we got our tank finished um, all the pockets are formed it was a long process but it's now done so now we're going to move on to installing the center pipe um, we're going to go ahead and take a measurement of the inside the height of the of the tank itself it's 34 and a quarter we're going to make this pipe about three inches taller just so it sticks up a little bit higher so that we can install the cap and it's above the soil so i've already cut this pipe and this pipe is at 37. now this pipe it is a sewer pipe so it has the holes already pre-drilled in it but there's not enough holes in this we want to add at least two more rolls uh, rows of, ho of holes i'm using a unibit it's a step bit um, you can just get a bit that's the same size as the holes that are in the uh, the pipe itself but I'm gonna go ahead and install several holes 
Um, they don't have to be exactly perfect, but I'm just gonna kinda eye it and then go from there. All right, so we've got our pipe. All the holes are drilled. I added quite a few more holes in this pipe than what was in there, just so the compost can leach into the soil and, um, and then also good water drainage to go down into our pipe. As it goes down into the cap, there's a ball valve down there. The water will drain, and then we'll just keep adding that water back into the tank. So now that the pipe's done, we're gonna go ahead, get our tank, put it up on this table here, and we're gonna uh, measure and put a hole in the bottom of the tank for this pipe to be inserted. Go ahead and uh, cut in this four inch. We're using a four and a half inch hole saw so that we can install this four inch, it's a male adapter, female adapter. So it's gonna go down through the bottom of the barrel. It's got threads on it for the cap to be installed. Um, as you can see, this tank has a seam right in the center of it that's dead center. So you just have to measure this direction and just put a Sharpie line there to figure out exactly where center is. And you're just going to take your pilot bit and line it up center of the mark, the crosshairs, and drill the hole. And it should fit nice and tight. That's real tight. So, so we will put, we'll apply some glue around this. We're going to use some polyurethane glue, and it'll make this thing nice and tight. It won't, it won't fall through. In fact, that's a pretty tight seal right there. You almost don't even have to glue it, but we're going to glue it and seal it just so the water doesn't leak out through there. All right, so we have some OD heavy duty clear PVC glue. We're gonna glue this pipe into our fitting that we've installed in the bottom of the barrel. You don't have to put a lot of glue. It's not handling pressure. So we're just gonna go around this pipe two or three times here, just get a good layer of glue. Get it positioned down here and just give it a twist. Push it right in. All right. And you can wipe, you can reach down there and wipe off the excess glue if you'd like. All right, so now that we've got this pipe in here, I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to draw a line where the pipe is in the bottom of the tank on the pipe. And I'll show you why we're going to do that. But so you're going to just take the Sharpie and put a line all the way around this fitting. So now I've pulled the pipe out of the tank. I'm going to put a series of holes just above this Sharpie line. And this is where the water will drain because this is basically the bottom, just right where this line is, this is the bottom of the tank. So if I don't install holes around, all the way around this, the water will sit from this hole down here. So that's about two inches of water that the tank will hold all the time. So we're going to put some relief holes in here so the water can drain properly. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We have several holes all the way around. So let's go ahead and put it back up in the pipe or in the tank. Okay, so we're going to cut a layer of paper. And what this paper is going to do, it's going to go in between the rock, the three inches of rock on the bottom of the barrel and our soil. So it's going to be a separator. Um, and so I've traced out the barrel on the paper and then the the four inch pipe in the center so i'm going to cut this out this is like a construction paper they use it in construction it's called x board you don't have to use this you could actually use um, some uh, felt or you could use 
uh, that garden felt that they used to keep weeds from popping up. I mean, you could use different material, but I'm going to use this. I've used it before and it works fine. The water will get around it. It's just that the mud from the soil won't plug up all the holes so the water will drain out properly. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and glue the fitting to the bottom of the barrel. I'm using PL uh, Premium Construction Adhesive. It's like a polyurethane and this glue will adhere to both the plastic coupler and the base of the barrel. I'm just going to put a bead all the way around. All right, so we're going to let this dry overnight. And once this is nice and dry, this will be a solid unit here. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to take the cap. We're going to take our cap and we're going to create a drain pipe with this ball valve. and the brass half inch nipple. I'm using a brass ball valve, it's a half inch. You don't have to use a brass ball valve, you could use something else. Um, but as you can see, this is solid plastic here and I'm going to be drilling a hole. Um, I'm not gonna over drill the hole, but I'm going to drill the hole just big enough for this nipple here, this brass nipple, this bushing here to be threaded in. So I, I want enough plastic to thread this in. It's going to come from the other side and then go into the ball valve. So I'm using this step bit here and I'm going to drill a hole right in the center. And I'm just going to kind of go gradually and keep checking to make sure this fitting will go in there nice and tight. That should probably do it. So this is going to thread from the other side. So it's going to thread from this direction, going down. Now I've got a socket, and this socket is a 21 millimeter. I'm going to stick this over the top of the fitting. It's coming through the base, and it's, it's really tight. I mean, I use this wrench. So now I'm gonna install my fitting. You wanna make sure that, that the lever, when you screw this on, the lever turns down so you can open it up. The lever on your ball valve, if I can get this screwed on. There, the ball valve, you want the lever to function up and down. But I got the te Teflon tape on there and we're gonna go ahead and screw this on. And we're going to fill this up with some glue. You don't have to do that, but I'm just going to fill this up with some glue in here all the way to the top of the fitting. So using the Loctite Premium Glue, I'm just going to fill in the void down at the bottom and we'll fill it up. Got our fitting here and our valve. It's all glued. We got the glue in there. It's nice and solid. It's dried overnight. And so this is ready. And it fits in there nice and tight, but we're not going to put this in now just because it'll get in the way of what we're going to be doing. But this part of that project is done. The last thing we're going to do to complete the tank, we got the paper cut. Um, I've got this welded wire here. It's galvanized welded wire, so it won't rust. It's got quarter inch holes in it. I'm going to cut a circle out of it, which I've already created one. I already got a circle cut. I used 10 snips to do it. Um, so I cut this circle. This circle will fit right down inside the pipe there. So when I screw this down, when you dump the compost, the compost will sit on the screen so it doesn't plug up our ball valve. And so moving on a step further, I have a quarter 20 bolt with two fender washers and two nuts. And I ran that up into the center of the screen, mainly so that I can pull this screen out if I want to clean out, I have something I can pull this out because otherwise I made it to where it was snug, to where it would stay up in there. So if I ever take this out, if I need to unclog this, I'm not 
allowing all of the compost to come falling down on me when I unscrew it. So basically, when this unscrews, the screen will still stay in there. And so as that starts to stack up with compost, when you're ready to clean out the pipe, you just pull the screen out and then pull all that out. All right, so the barrel's nice and painted. We've got it on the wagon here. We've brought it out to the garage where we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and build a stand for it. I'm gonna make one out of metal. You can make one out of wood, some two by fours. Um, but this stand right here, this is an actual stand for a hot water heater. You can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, this, is, this will definitely handle the weight of this tank right here once it's filled with dirt um, but I use this for welding projects this stand so I have a bunch of scrap metal over here that I've uh, just got laying around I have a, I have a little small little scrap yard <laughs> yeah, under the house so um, I'm gonna take this metal here and I'm gonna make a stand just like this So I installed about two and a half, maybe three inches of rock down on the bottom of the barrel. And you can see I put some water in there just to see how it was going to drain. And the water is leaching out nice. It's working the way I intended it to. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put the layer of paper in and then we're going to start putting mixing compost and dirt together. So now that I got the paper installed, I'm going to go ahead and start putting my topsoil in. The nice thing about these holes is you can get your hands in there and spread it around at each level. All right, now that we have the topsoil installed in the barrel, we're gonna go ahead and start putting in our plant starters in. Go ahead and load up some compost into the four inch pipe. So what we've got here, we got a mixture of, we got banana peels, there's eggshells, we got coffee grounds. It's pretty disgusting looking and it smells nice and rancid, but this is some pretty amazing compost that will um, decompose over time. But I'm just kind of mixing it up and I'm just going to add it to this tank. And you probably want to use gloves <laughs> and use a mask or just, you know, if you got a weak stomach. This has been sitting in here for a while. Now the screen that's down on the bottom will prevent this from clogging up the actual uh, ball valve at the bottom. So we're going to put the cap back on, the 4 inch pipe, and then now we'll go ahead and install the worms. So we got these night crawlers here, 
there's 18 night crawlers per container. We just picked these up at Walmart in the fishing department. Um, you could probably go to any fishing store or a lot of uh, maybe CVS pharmacies have fishing gear, any place that has worms. So as you can see, these guys are going to love this, this new palace that they are going to be living in. So these worms will help make this soil nice and rich and they'll move all around here. They'll actually go through these, uh, the holes that are in the pipe as well and get into the compost and help um, break down the compost and make this soil rich over time. You want to make sure your worms are alive too when you buy them. Open it up and make sure that they're moving around. You'll have an amazing garden tower in no time at all when you plant these plants in there. So this is very economical. It's compact and you could have multiple uh, garden towers, four or five or six depending on how many uh, you would like for in your backyard or on your deck. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope this helped you uh, be able to create your own plants in your garden tower. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next video.